It's a top 10 matchup between the hedges as Georgia and Ole Miss meet for the first time since 2016. David Johnson and Jordan Hill are here to break down this game. Ole Miss won that game back in 2016 in what was Kirby Smart's first loss in Athens. The Rebels hoping for similar magic in this one. Opening as an 11 point underdog, the smallest spread Georgia has faced this season. Now the SEC championship game could be decided by the end of this. A Georgia win would clinch the SEC East for the dogs and the SEC West for Bama. But an Ole Miss win keeps them in the hunt and could be the biggest win of Lane Kiffin's tenure in Oxford. So David, the question is, how do the Rebs handle this moment? Yeah, that is the question. Uh, such a big game for Ole Miss. And, you know, it, it all depends on... Uh, you know, how they handle such a massive stage. College game day will be there. Um, they've won big games before under Lane Kiffin. They beat LSU earlier this year. Um, but this game is as big of a game for Ole Miss as I can remember, probably dating back to 2015 when they beat Alabama at Alabama. Um, much more on the line, bigger than conference implications for the Rebels. If they win this game, they're going to pass number two Georgia somewhere in the college football playoff standings and uh, that's what's on the line for Ole Miss. Brock Bowers watch is on as the do it all tight end missed the last two games after tightrope surgery on his ankle but he's back out at practice running around and another injury to watch is linebacker Jamon Dumas Johnson. Jordan what's the latest you're hearing on them? Yeah, Brock Bowers obviously being back running at practice uh, is definitely a good sign for the tight end. Got hurt against Vanderbilt in mid-October. And, you know, we talked to Marcus Rosemey, Jack Saint, one of Georgia's receivers last night. I, I don't think Kirby Smart was thrilled with what he had to say. He told the media, hey, you know, I heard that uh, Brock Bowers was running 19, 20 miles per hour on the GPS. Probably don't want that out there. Uh, but it's definitely a good sign for how Brock is coming along. My anticipation is he is going to suit up on Saturday. The question is, how does he come out of this week of running, of trying to get acclimated, get back after that ankle injury? I'm not sure if he will play. My anticipation is he is going to play, but will play limited snaps. Now, the other injury to watch, Jamon Dumas Johnson got hurt at the end of the third quarter of the Missouri game. Sounds like it's a fractured forearm. Kirby wasn't really wanting to, to share a whole lot of details there. I am not anticipating he will be able to go in this. Kirby did not think he would be able to play in a brace. Uh, I think that we may not see him again in the regular season. Definitely a significant blow for this Georgia defense. Jamon Dumas Johnson, very, very talented veteran linebacker, and I really think had been playing his best ball when he was injured. Brock Bowers hitting 19 miles an hour on the GPS is a wild slip of the tongue by his teammate. But beyond the injuries, Georgia's biggest problem might be Quinshawn Judkins. He leads the SEC with 12 rushing touchdowns and has rushed for over 100 yards in three straight games. So, David, how do you see him matching up against this Georgia defense? Yeah, I think Quinshawn's going to do fine. Uh, earlier in the year when he wasn't running as effectively as we all got used to watching him run last year, Ole Miss was having some difficulty up front on their offensive line. Those guys have come together right around the LSU victory earlier this year. And uh, Quinshawn's been running hard, tremendously hard. So, you know, I, I think they're going to be fine and they're running it. Yeah, just to follow up on what David had to say, I mean, when you look at Quinshawn Junkins, the fact that he's had three straight games with 100 yards, I believe four out of the last five, I think that's got to really put some pause in this Georgia defense. You know, last week's game against Missouri, Cody Schrader, super effective, 5.1 yards per carry. You know that uh, there are opportunities on this Georgia defense. Now, when you look at that Missouri game, I do wonder if Georgia said, look, we'll let Cody Schrader get his. We're going to stop the passing game. And for the most part, they kept the Tigers in check. But Quinshawn Junkins, very, very talented running back. I think he has to have a big game if Ole Miss is going to have a chance to pull off this upset. All right. A lot on the line in this one. So the key to getting a win, Jordan, what do you think it is? For Georgia, I really think it starts on offense when it comes to being able to make plays on first and second down. They've honestly done a pretty good job of that this season, but uncharacteristically, they really struggled against Missouri. Average third down yardage needed. Uh, third and seven was what they faced more often than not. Had five plays where they needed at least nine yards to convert. That's just not a winning formula when you play anybody, much less the number nine team in the country. I think it really starts there. I think they have to win the turnover margin. Ole Miss has been very good in that department. And as we just talked about, you have to slow down Quinshawn Jukins. I think if he has a big game, 
uh, it's going to put Georgia in a really tough spot if they're going to stay undefeated by the end of the night. Yeah, I think the key to an Ole Miss victory is going to be putting a pass rush on Georgia quarterback Carson Beck. Um, I don't think you can let Beck sit back there and be comfortable in the pocket all night. Ole Miss is certainly capable of doing that. They have two excellent rush ins in Cedric Johnson and Jared Ivey. Uh, they're among the national leaders in quarterback sacks. They must pressure Beck. And at the same time, they've got to have a running game for Jackson Dart, the quarterback, to be at his best. And if they can be a balanced offense, a Jack Beck in the pocket, I think this can be a very close game. All right, great stuff, David and Jordan. Enjoy your game day. And for more on this matchup, be sure to check out Inside the Rebels and Dogs 24-7 for your Ole Miss and Georgia football and recruiting news all year long. Oh, <laughs>